So I have uh, various ways of dealing with problems. Last fall I got really tired of dealing with ultra cheap, ultra crappy C-clamps like store-bought ones that break, so I just went all out and built some fairly large C-clamps. But I still wondered, you know, what what do you actually get? What's the actual best C-clamp you can just go out and buy for a fairly affordable price? All these are under approximately $40, most are closer to $20 or $30. And uh, so today, that's what we're going to be taking a look at. I got four of these C-clamps here. I've got a new Irwin for comparison to an old Irwin, plus a new Bessie, a new Yoast, and new Wilton clamp here. So uh, this should be kind of cool. Never done anything quite like it before. But first off, let's take a look at these contenders. Now, having gone through these, and I'll also say I'm not affiliated with any of these companies, nor have I ever been, but going through all of these, if all you want to watch is the first minute or so of the video and you just want to know what C-clamp to buy, buy some of these Yoasts. These things are among the cheapest out of any of these things. Uh, they're among the nicest here. It's actually tied for size, weight, mass, and fit and finish with the Wilton exactly, and the Wilton costs like 15 bucks more or something. These things are actually so incredibly well made, except for a little bit of a rough spot on the casting here and there. I think when the video's done, I'm actually gonna go buy like probably five or six of these for the shop. But the reason why I like these things is they have a very heavy screw on them. The screw on this, again, it's identical to the one on the Wilton C-clamp that costs a lot more, and it's much larger and it has much more durable, uh, fatter threading on it, if you will, than either the Irwin or the Bessie. So, Moving through these, I'll start with the one that in my opinion is kind of the crappiest and that is this Bessie C-clamp. This thing, well alright, so I'll start off here. These are all made in at least China. A couple of these might be from Taiwan, but most of them don't even say where they're from, even though legally they have to, they just don't. And um, so this is by far the crappiest one here. I mean, look at this right out of the box. Never even used this thing. The screw doesn't even line up with the, uh, with the pad here on the top of it. It weighs maybe half of what either the Yoast or the Wilton do. It's extremely built light. Uh, and the, the, the screw on it looks considerably wimpy as well. Uh, honestly, I've got a little test planned out where we really get to reef down on these things and I'm not 100% sure this one's even going to survive because, you know, honestly it's kind of sad to see. It's a genuine Bessie. Uh, they used to make some really great stuff. I think they still have some higher end stuff, but for the most part, they're out of quality commercial industrial tools and they do like Home Depot grade stuff now. This is exactly like some of the ones I've bought from them over the last few years and to be honest, none of them have held up very well. Now. Moving on from that, next up in the line of awesomeness, we have this nice Irwin here. And Irwin, well this isn't the heaviest duty C-clamp here for the price. It um, actually has made some great improvements, so major props to Irwin. They've made some great improvements over what they sold a few years ago when I bought this hunk of junk. So as you can see, just from like average duty metal shop type work, this thing is completely bent, this part of it. Instead of being flat up like this, it's like like that. Uh, the screw is like twisted and it doesn't line up even close to the top of this thing. But Irwin, props to them, they've really, really stepped up their C-clamp game in the last few years. This one compared to that one, it's got a lot more reinforcement on it. It's got uh, much more metal in it. It weighs probably a third more than this. Uh, the screw is a lot larger. The end cap design is different. And I'm actually really proud of Irwin for this. They uh, evidently majorly stepped up because there's honestly no comparison between this 8 inch C-clamp and this 8 inch C-clamp despite the fact they cost almost exactly the same amount of money in their respective time periods and they're from the same class of uh, lower end more affordable clamps. That's another thing. In the Bessie's defense it is the cheapest clamp here however it's the cheapest clamp here because I couldn't find anything from them that was better. This is if you're gonna buy common stuff on the internet at least from all the searching I did and I tried pretty hard because I wanted to give them a fair shake this right here is as good as it gets. So, uh, another thing about the Irwin, right out of the box, the uh, screw lines up with the top part of the clamp here. Turns nice and smooth. Honestly, I don't really see any problems with this. The casting on this is a lot smoother than the Yoast. Um, I think, depending on what their price is, I would consider this, because I believe it's a little bit less money than this, but don't quote me on that. I'm not in front of my computer right now, obviously. But this is honestly not a bad clamp whatsoever. So moving on from that, we've got these two contenders, the, Yil the Wilton and the Yoast, trying to blend words together here. These are both the model 408, or actually the Yoast is like the 408Y, and I mean they are 
friggin' identical. I would not be surprised at all if these things came from the same factory somewhere over there in the Far East. Literally the only difference between the two that I've been able to find, and I've studied this fairly in depth, is that, and this is a really cool feature, I really like it. On the Wilton, what you have on the top of this thing, there's actually this groove in the pad. So presumably, ah oh shoot, the groove's not even even. Oh boy, okay, well. All right, I would have expected this to be a lot more uniform since it's a Wilton and they were a pretty high-end brand. So anyway, what this groove does here is if you're clamping this onto a piece of angle iron or if you're clamping this onto a piece of angle iron, for instance, instead of the angle iron just like wandering around and moving all over the place, it'll, in theory at least, sit down in that groove real nice. And this probably works on smaller round stock too. It's really simple, but I think it's really ingenious. I can't really tell you how it works though because, you know, obviously these are fresh out of the box. I haven't really tried that out too much, but the fit and finish on these is very nice. The Wilton, I'd say now it's a draw. It had a slightly smoother casting than the Yost, but this thing is all like cattywampus in here, so that sort of cancels it out. Uh, and it appears is that they have the same exact screw and the same exact screw design. Like the dimensions up here, visually at least, they're exactly the same. These pads are identical, like down to the, uh, the finishing from the lathe that turned these things. It's exactly the same. And I mean, look at that. If that's not a carbon copy, I don't know what is. I, honestly, guys, I really think these are off the same line somewhere some eighth inch wall square tubing and we're gonna try and crush these things because this requires some level of force but honestly not all that much and I think any decent C-clamp should put out the uh, force required to do so. So since the Yoast is the one that's impressed me the most and one I'm probably gonna buy several of for the shop after I'm done filming this video now, uh, we're gonna try this one first. So I'm really putting it to her now and it's uh, still turning very smoothly. I don't feel anything bending yet. Tube's collapsing very easily. I'm just gonna adjust my grip here a little bit. It's taking a considerable amount of force to do this. <clears throat> but we're doing it. And the clamp is taking it like a champ. The screw's not <clears throat> wanting to strip or anything. See, that's probably about close enough. Let's see what kind of gap we still have in here. Looks like about seven eighths of an inch. All right, so we'll see if the others can smash this down so there's only seven eighths of an inch of gap in there. All right, so first test of the Yoast. It's perfect. Everything still works. Close this and see how well it lines up. Maybe a tiny bit of noticeable difference here. Less than an eighth inch of bend after that test. Whew. All right. A Newell Rubbermaid Company, Irwin Industrial Tools, USA, made in China. All right, yeah, so I'm pretty sure these are all from the Far East. So this clamp looks pretty promising, especially with its updated I-beam style construction. Uh, however, it's still, I think, maybe a little bit lighter duty than that Yoast, so it's gonna be interesting to see how well it does this, if at all. All right, I'm putting the screws to her. She's turning. <clears throat> I'm starting to have my doubts about this little handle that they give you here. I have a feeling this piece of round steel is probably gonna start to bend here before too long. <clears throat> All right, you know what, I got to do, uh, hang on. All right, so the little dingus they give you is nowhere near as long as it was on the Yoast, and I don't have that great a leverage, and this is really hard on my wrist now. So I'm gonna use these pliers with the rag so we don't scratch the crap out of this too much. And uh, this really doesn't change anything for the mechanics of the test because we're still trying to smash this down to within a 7 8 gap. It just makes things easier on me. And yeah, all right, still turning. This clamp, it's not feeling quite as stable as the, uh, as the Yoast did. I feel a little bit of torsion in it. <clears throat> but it's taking it, it's still screwing down real nice and smooth. <clears throat> that smashed down pretty good. Looks like only about one more crank and we'll be down the 7 eighths of an inch. Yeah, seven eighths, almost exactly. All right, so looking at this, 
You can see we've got a lot of deformation if we face this straight on. The screw, instead of lining up going straight into this pad, it's like all the way down here. Can you see that? Yeah. And uh, I mean the whole clamp is crooked right now. I don't believe we had this problem, or at least not as bad with the last one. However, it appears as though the clamp has done it. Lefty Lucy, yeah. This one's not releasing as smoothly as the last one did. Alright, it survived. We have some damage, however. You can see this little cap piece here. It's considerably deformed. Whereas the one on the Yost over here is completely and totally flawless. See that? No noticeable deformation at all. Or is this we're tearing out the entire side of it already after one use? All right, so let's see how this lines up. Hmm, surprisingly well. Yeah. All right, so aside from the cap that they gave these, that they gave this thing, it appears as though the clamp is fairly solid and can take some uh, take some use. All right. Swap out this block, my highly scientific test here, for some highly scientific tools. This might be good. This screw, looking at it, it's incredibly wimpy, and the entire clamp is extremely lightweight. All right. I'm really doing my best to give this a, uh, a decent test. I've had some issues with Bessie, with Bessie products before, so I'm trying to uh, leave that outside, though, for the sake of you guys. All right, so look. This thing, it's not gripping the back of the clamp as well. I don't know, I don't fully understand why, but this is going all the way down. It's going to hit that C-clamp, whereas both of the others stayed vertical or mostly vertical. So, all right, cranking. It's actually going smoothly. It's going a little bit smoother than I thought it might. Oh, 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 oh man. Oh. Well, that's a fail. That's clearly a fail. I mean, this whole clamp is like twisted and bowed. Simultaneously, the entire clamp went like <gasps> and this thing is tearing straight out through the side of this cap. What a total piece of junk. I'm sorry, I try to keep such opinions to myself, but honestly, I got nothing else to say. So there was basically no deflection. We have uh, an inch and five eighths of gap here. All the other clamps made it all the way down to seven eighths of an inch and they were just fine. This is basically completely destroyed. I mean, this is like twisted sideways. I'm gonna try and free it. Oh man, that cap is destroyed. The Irwin had a little bit of a tear. This thing is like all wallowed out. Oh, oh man. However, interestingly enough, to Bessie's credit, it appears as though this thing is actually closing up straighter than I thought it would. It's still off by like more than a quarter inch from where we started. Oh man, that's pretty crazy. I was not expecting that. All right, I lied. So basically what it looks like is that either the screw or this cast piece up here is bent. So every single time you go to tighten up this uh, screw, it does something totally different. Now it's off by like an eighth inch this way. And last time it was like an eighth inch cattywampus off that way. I mean, that's uh, you guys have seen everything I said. I mean, I got nothing else to add to that. So this thing, you can barely even tell it was used. There's next to no deformation on this, but we're gonna change that anyway. And we're gonna put the wilt into the screws. All right, are you ready? Ready. All right, so I'm getting used to holding the weight of this Wilton clamp up from the uh, the Irwin and the Bessie. It's quite massive, again, just like the Yost. And this one's probably going to survive, so I'm going to put the rag on it. Nothing but the most scientific procedures. Yeah, that's really odd. This one wants to twist over sideways too. I don't know what causes that. It's probably nothing to worry about though. But it's odd that only two of the clamps want to do it, and the other two stay put. All right, so we've already surpassed how far the Bessie made it with like one turn. And it's 
doing it to it. Things are moving around a little bit. I'm not really sure where, but I can feel some movement. It's really odd that I don't remember feeling this with the Yost though, and I'm feeling it with the Wilton and they're basically identical. But I don't know, it could just be me. It's probably just me. Mm. All right, I think that's already seven eighths of an inch. Uh, that's actually more. <laughs> Oops, that's uh, down to five eighths of an inch. I cranked this down an extra eighth inch more than any of them. As you can see, it looks just fine. No noticeable deformation. Well, maybe a little bit. It looks like the screw is starting to move out ahead of the front of this thing, but I don't see anything damaged. This, this piece here isn't torn, and uh, the screw doesn't appear to be bent. Let's back this off. And again, we have the nice long dingus here, so I don't need the uh, pliers for this. <clears throat> How about that? So when we put this together, you can see that this uh, pad here isn't 100% centered, but it's really close. It's like a 16th of an inch off the center. Everything appears to have moved back the way that it should, and even after being put under some fairly extreme loading, there's uh, no noticeable permanent damage at all to this clamp. So you ask yourself, how interesting can some C-clamps be? But honestly, I really enjoyed making this video. I had a lot of fun here. To summarize, the Irwin clamp is uh, second best to either of these two. With the Wilton, you're paying a lot more for the brand name and for this one little feature, which like I said on mine is all sorts of cattywampus and not even at all. Um, the Yoast seems to be by far the best value here. It's like $22 for this thing. I mean, that's incredibly well made. Honestly, at, right after I'm done filming this video, I'm gonna order five or six of these and put some on my shop, some in my shop and some in my truck. Uh, the Irwin is the best for the money. I believe this is a little bit cheaper than the Yoast. It's like 15, 16 bucks or something. And I'll put links in the description of this video to all these clamps. Uh, friendly reminder, anytime you guys purchase anything through the Amazon links in the description of my video, uh, it doesn't cost you any more, but it really helps out the show quite a bit. So it's just something to keep in mind. And uh, the Irwin is honestly not bad. This is not a bad clamp at all. Um, unlike the Bessie, which failed catastrophically the very first time we used it. And you know, I realize it's the lightest one here, but like I said, I wasn't able to find anything heavier and close to the same price category as any of this. So, thanks for watching.